Welcome back to the Gentleman Grachowski Show. My name is Larry, and I'm your host. Bill Wilt has been the host of the television show Motorsports Unlimited for over 35 years. Unfortunately, Bill passed away recently, but I did have the, the privilege of interviewing Bill a couple years ago, and I thought this would be a good opportunity to take a look at that interview again and maybe add some words from some of his friends and some of his colleagues and talk a little bit about Bill and what uh, he has meant to them. Bill wanted to raise public conscience for uh, and public understanding and appreciation for the motorsports community and their activities. He said the show was intended for people who don't, I repeat, who don't care about motorsports, and not necessarily for the gearheads. He wanted to make the uh, get the word out there what motorsports meant to the community and why people should support it. And uh, that was his mission, his goal for over uh, 35 years of television shows. I, um, in this interview, I'm, I had the opportunity to sit down with Bill, and I asked him how he got the name Motorsports Unlimited, and he uh, will start off explaining that right here. Hope you enjoyed this episode of The Gentleman Grachowski Show. I was friends with a, with a fellow named Walter Modelski, who was a guy that did Formula Atlantic racing, and he became the first show that we did on Motorsports Unlimited. It was about Walter Modelski's Formula Atlantic uh, car. And, uh, and we were friends, and we, we had been discussing. I said, what can I call this show? What can I call it? And blah, 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 blah. And after a while, because I said, no, I said, I want to have everything. I want airplanes on there. I want snowmobiles on there. I want boats on there and everything. So he said, well, why not just Motorsports Unlimited? I said, huh. Yeah, I think Very that simple. works. Let's go Motorsports Unlimited. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's, it's all inclusive. Yeah. yeah. What are the challenges of producing a show on location weekly? Um, well, the, for me, without question, the most difficult part was always rounding up the girls. You may or may not be aware, aware that Motorsports Unlimited is always known as the show with the girls with the feathers. And yeah. it, it's a wonderful hook that has been working perfectly over the years. And as much as I like it that way, it triples my work having the girls on the show. Well, um, just, as you can see, anytime you deal with other people, yeah, there's always reliability something. problems and all. Oh, it phone makes it, calls. It, oh, it makes it phone. <laughs> it makes it crazy. It absolutely makes it crazy. And uh, without a doubt, rounding up the girls every week was. I felt sorry for my poor wife. She was in charge of that. Yeah. And, and if, if it hadn't been for her, we couldn't have done it. But she was in charge of that every week to, is to round up the girls. And again public access television, nobody gets paid, everybody's a volunteer, so it's not like you can cut somebody's check off, you know, you, yeah. you, you know you're, you're, you're determined to get the volunteers out there and accommodate them, I mean, I can't tell you the number of times I've driven a half an hour to pick up a girl for the show because uh -huh. I needed her for the show. Right. Do you remember your first episode? Yeah, I do. Well, I, you know, I said Walter Moldowski's uh, car was, uh, yeah. Premier Land car, and it was the first episode. However, there's a little caveat in there that before we did that episode, as we were planning it, uh, they asked me to do a presentation to the Chicagoland Sports Car Club. And okay. I put together a whole thing about what I saw, the problems of why we were losing the racetracks and all that. And I put together a whole presentation. And a friend of mine said he wanted to tape it, which he did, but it wasn't, it wasn't with three quarter inch or anything we'd been using then. He was using a camcorder kind of a thing. But after he did it, I looked at it I says, you know, now with this public access thing, I can actually put that on the air. So I did a little editing on that. But I don't like to say that was the first one because I didn't shoot it, and you know what I mean. It was just it was just by chance. But actually, officially, that was Motorsports Unlimited's uh, first episode. But the first real episode that we planned and put together was Walt Modelski's Formula Atlanta car. And this, and then did it go smooth? Oh no, we, we, <laughs> were, we were using the Westchester studio, and we thought we had it all planned out, and everything was measured, and. I don't have to tell you that the car wouldn't fit in the studio. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Oh, yeah. And fortunately, they had a little parking lot in the uh, back of the place. So we left the big doors up and rolled the camera out. There you and, go. And, you know, you do what you have to do. And that's not the first time that that's happened to me. I remember we did a show in Chicago. We were using the Chicago Access Studio. We did a show about uh, uh, boat racing. Uh, Ray Lumbert, who one of the top boat racers in the country and he's right out here from I think he's from Lombard and uh, so he comes down they come down with their boats and the advantage of the Chicago Access Studio is they've got two 
big eight foot wide, eight foot high doors entering the place from street level so we could get this equipment. I had airplanes in there one time. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so we, we're all set. We open the doors and we're gonna bring them in and there's no way the boats won't go in the studio. I says, that can't be. The, the law on the highway is the trailer can't be wider than eight feet. So I know it's gonna fit, right? And it, well, their trailers were almost nine feet wide. He's, yeah, we just hope nobody notices. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like, you run into all these kinds. So we ended up shooting that program in the, just outside the door where it entered the studio. But you do what you have to do, you know? Yeah. Bill Will. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant in the uh, JBTV studios here. Um, many years ago, I ran into this awesome show on public access television on Can TV 19 here in Chicago. And uh, there was a television show called Motorsports Unlimited. And I, I met Bill Wilt and I said, Bill, you need an open for your show. So I put together an open for his show. And every couple years I say, Bill, let's update that open. I got high definition equipment. I can do all this stuff. And, but he said, I like this open. And he used that open on each and every show for all these years. Stay tuned because for the next 60 minutes, Motorsports Unlimited is on the air. Hi, I'm Jerry Bryant and these are the lovely ladies of Motorsports. Thanks, Jerry. And hi, everybody. Welcome to the studio headquarters of Chicagoland's most watched, most talked about access television series. I'm Bill Wilt and this is the 1427th edition of Motorsports. And Bill was one of those people out there that has a passion for what he cares about. He wanted to inform you about all types of motorsports. Today we continue our explanation of what Motorsports Unlimited has been all about for the past 30 plus years. As explained many times, our interest is the survival of motorsport and all of the attendant things that activity provides. From airplanes. P-51 was just had the lines right, it had the right performance, it was a magnificent achieving airplane. From airplanes to race cars to custom motorcycles. The nice thing about flat track motorcycle racing is the interchangeability of parts. And he even went on all these crazy motorcycle trips. As a matter of fact, and I ought to be embarrassed to admit this, many came up to me to ask me about my vintage Suzuki. Vintage indeed, it's my daily driver, I told them. I just rode it all the way from Chicago. He also did a lot of charity events, toys for tots, things that he cared about, he put on television. Without any regard for profit or any of that, it was all about the dedication. Uh, there is talk of a little bit of rain this afternoon. I'm not gonna worry about it right now, of course, but uh, once again, uh, Amelia Earhart said that adventure is where you find it. And then some years later, somebody else said, uh, it's only an adventure when something goes wrong. Uh, and I hope to disagree with that. So hopefully it doesn't start raining. A bringing high quality television about motorsports, And Bill Wilt was that leader. We're gonna miss Bill Wilt. He was such an incredible person. What a great man. What a great heart. He will truly be missed. I will miss him as my friend, and I know others will too. For me, this was more pressure to get a turbining drag bike on the track. The drive line challenges of the wheel-driven machine would have to wait. I needed to redouble my efforts to get the thrust power machine finished. So if you've never discovered Bill Wilt, maybe now's the time to discover him because Bill Wilt's memory will not die. It will live on forever. For those of us that knew Bill Wilt, it's a very, very sad day. And uh, for those of you that don't know Bill Wilt, I hope you go out and, and, and check up on him because uh, I think he can inspire you. Old story. A shiny new object was held up to us as trade, something we could not resist, something for which we were willing to sacrifice our unique free speech guarantee. And what was that shiny new object? Broadcast. So Bill Wilt, we will miss you. And uh, I know that you'll be looking over for us. And all I can do is uh, say a prayer and say, if there's anyone out there that knows, you know, I don't know. It's hard for me to pray on television, but I know that you'll say a prayer in your heart for the late, great Bill Wilt. Thank you, Bill for all you've done. And now, hopefully, if anyone deserves a great place in heaven, it's you, Bill Wilt. I'm Bill Wilt, thanks for watching. Bill, thank you for everything. You will be remembered, and we will miss you forever. 
Thanks for watching. We love you, Bill, and we miss you. Why do guys like fast, loud cars? Uh, I think it's, I, I'm not so sure if the loud is important, but at least uh, for people like me, uh, it's just uh, instinctive in us. From the time I was a little kid, I can remember the first time, uh, I'm originally from upstate New York. Well, I mean, I was, I was, I was born in Pittsfield, Massachusetts, but I lived in Maine too. But the bulk of my years before 12 years old, I lived in upstate New York and they used to have county fairs. It was the country part of New York, not Manhattan or anything, the country part. And uh, the county fair would come through and they have a thing called the Hell Drivers. And the parents would take us there and I was just fascinated by the cars going around the track and all that. And then when I got a little bit older, my sister, who was five years older than me, uh, took me one time to the Sharon Springs Raceway. That was a close okay. little town and uh, they had a stock car track there. And I mean, I could have spent my life there. I was so just enthralled with it. And I kind of thought, this will probably strike you as funny, but I kind of thought all young guys do that. I found out later in life, <laughs> They don't, right. but but it sort of surprised me because everybody I knew, me and all of my friends, we were always fascinated with cars and making them go faster and building engines and all that sort of thing. And between myself and my friends, that's what we did. Uh, and then it was, I can almost tell you when it happened, I got a job with United Airlines and for the first time, uh, I'm in a ready room with about 100 guys, all young guys. And it turns out there were only five or six of us that were gearheads. The rest of them were like normal people. Normal, so, okay. Yeah, so I, I found out everybody wasn't like that. But I thought in my younger years, all young. In fact, my dad used to say, this, oh, you'll grow out of that. All young guys are like yeah. that. I never grew out of it. But was there something specific you liked about it? Everything. The engine sounds, uh, the mechanical workings. I'm fascinated by machinery. I, I always have been. Uh, my mother used to say, and again, I'm taking her word for it, that as a child, my favorite toy was a percolator. If you remember what those were, those were, that's how people made coffee. Right, okay. And it had a glass thing on the top that the thing right, would percolate okay. into. Well, but it was a series of pieces. And for some reason, as a three-year-old, I delighted in taking it apart and putting it together and all that so it was just for me it was normal see i'm just the opposite once it's together i don't even want to touch it I don't oh even no, wanna, no i don't i'm not a gear like a gearhead where i want to figure out what's everything about i want to know how I everything works part. i want to know how everything works and how i can make it better and it's, did you do uh, have any creations on the percolator that you uh get mom upset about did you uh, do anything to it no not really in fact uh, they at that time they were encouraging it although later they would try the discouraging but at that time they, were, they didn't realize what it was going to lead to you know were you drinking the coffee too or just uh, no it? you know what interesting enough i i don't drink coffee and never have you just liked the the, the mechanics just like the mechanics of the percolator who's so many pieces that went together hi i'm mike mikrit producer of the larry and mike show for comcast public access television I'd like to say a few things about Bill Wilt. I used to watch his public access show, Motorsports Unlimited, on a weekly basis, every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Well, I must say, I was very influenced by the way he produced the program. He put a lot of work into it, a lot of effort, and he inspired me to do my own public access show. First, it was Dancing Chicago Style, and then the Larry and Mike Show. I've been doing public access for uh, close to 30 years. So I'd just like to give a shout out to Bill Wilt and say, Godspeed. I'd also like to send my sincere condolences to his family and friends. He will be missed. He was a, a great gentleman, and he knew a lot about motorsports. Godspeed, Bill. What life events made you want to produce a television show about motorsports? Well, the, the, quite frankly, our, our sport is dying, and okay. I had great concerns about it. I became aware, I've always been involved with motorsports. Uh, from the time I had my first motorcycle, I went to my first official 
drag race, meaning not a street race, but my official right. drag race at the old Oswego Dragway uh, with a motorcycle. And I became aware that uh, in 1953, there were more than 2,500 racetracks in this country. And at that time, we had fewer than 800. So it was obvious we were losing them at a, at a very high rate. And I had great concerns about that. So I looked at it and studied it, and it became kind of an obsession in life to find out why. What, what are we missing? What's wrong here? Why are we losing these tracks? And why are fewer and fewer people involved with this? And I became aware, you have to remember, I'm 73 years old now. And I'm, I was born in 1943. So okay. I remember before there was television. Right. And I've watched television change our country in every way. And motorsport was omitted from television. We had no part in it. Uh, at the very beginning, the only sports on television typically was baseball because baseball was slow moving and the camera equipment and all that at that time, I'm talking about the early and mid 50s, okay. camera equipment was large and bulky and slow moving and needed a lot of light. So a baseball game and the daylight was something they could photograph well. So that was kind of included a lot on television, whereas motorsports uh, wasn't. Okay. Uh, as I became aware that but there's a reason that our community is diminishing, and it has to do with television. I said, somehow I've got to get my community on television. And, and I boiled it down to a few words over time that what I was trying to do was raise public consciousness, understanding, and appreciation of the motorsport community and their activities. And the only way you can do that in America is by television. Thus, I used, I mean, my, my original intent, and it still may be that way, was I wanted to sue ABC, NBC, and CBS, and the FCC for misuse of the public airwaves because I didn't have access to them. Right. And when I stumbled on, cable television came along and it was new, and I'm looking at it and I kept hearing this word, public access. I said, what is that? I'm public, I don't have access. Well, public access cable, you do have access. And that's when I started pressing for it. So it wasn't that I had any interest in a television career or anything like that. It was, I wanted to get my community on the air. I wanted to get the public familiar with them and, and hopefully develop an appreciation for what they do. And the thing is, back in the day, you were talking about there was not there was not much sports, there was not much, much on television when you were growing up. Right. As you were, you started the show in the in the eighties. Eighty six. Eighty six. Yeah. Was, wasn't uh, like NASCAR bigger at that time? No. It, they, in fact, you might find it interesting when because a lot of people have asked me that, Bill, why do you keep doing it? Because there's a lot of that on the air. As well, first of all, two things. Uh, there's not a lot of what I do on the air and just briefly i'll get back to it but briefly what i do is i have a motorsport program for people who don't give a darn about motorsports those are the people i want to talk to that i don't, don't care about it that don't care about it okay. I, I don't do the show for the gearheads it's not technically enough for that and quite frankly we already know how wonderful we are we don't need to be convinced <laughs> no it's true we don't need to be convinced right but the tolerance of the public is important to us because those are the ones that get the racetracks closed and all of the rest of it. So it's really important to our community that people have an appreciation for what we do and why we do it. Now you talk about NASCAR. When cable first came along, there was no motorsport on television. The only thing that we had was a delayed tape coverage of the Indy 500. Okay. Cable was looking for something to put on the air and they ended up making a deal with NASCAR, with ESPN, of putting NASCAR, but this didn't come the first few years. This came four or five years after cable came into existence. So they started putting NASCAR in the air. It got to be very popular. Eventually NASCAR moved to network television and all that. But when cable started, none of it was on the air, none of it at all. Hi, I'm Janice Newman of Why Why Not Show. And I just wanted to say, I really appreciate having Bill on my show. He was a wonderful guest. He was inspiring. And I really liked his dedication to public access. He was interesting to interview because he gave a large portion of his life to doing his show Motorsports Unlimited. He understood that even though he had a great knowledge of cars, boats, trucks, anything with wills, Bill knew. He knew to get the people's attention, he had to come up with some catchy gimmick or idea. And he came up with the beautiful girls and the outfits with the feathers on their heads. And I was inspired by Bill because some days you do have to think out the box. And he was a master of that. And besides being a master of his craft, he was dedicated to it. So it's something we should all learn in public access. He was dedicated to producing a new show every week, no matter what. Illness, 
sickness, health, and better times, good times, he still made sure he produced his show. So he taught us a real good lesson that if there's something you want in life, you have to go for it. And when someone says no, like public television, Comcast has said no to him, he kept going and he pursued it until he got what he wanted. And that was producing his show on the public access television show on the stations. So it's farewell to Bill, but it's never farewell because he lives in the hearts and memories of us. Even as a child, I remembered his show. So I'm happy that I got to know him. I'm happy I got to receive his inspiration and his knowledge to help produce on my show and teach me well. So I pray that you're in heaven, Bill, and plenty of feathers around you. How do hot women and, and fast cars go together so well? I think it's because motorsports is predominantly a young male sport. And young males are full of hormones and uh, they love fast cars as you characterized them earlier, fast loud cars and yeah. pretty girls. It's just part of our lives. It's just the things that makes young males go. And it was difficult to get the women ready for the shoots. Oh, it was, it, it was not a matter of ready for the shoots. It's a matter, it's the reliability. And I'm not the only one that's had that, that trouble. First of all, I can kind of understand it because again, public access television, nobody gets paid, everybody's a volunteer. So it's a little hard to be real demanding. And yet for television, you have to be demanding. You can't start whenever you feel like it. You've got, <laughs> we're ready to go. Yeah. And, and uh, but I've known many people who've had restaurants and they had problems with waitresses too, as far as reliability and all that sort of thing. It's just, it's, I, it's one of the things over the years, and I've taken my share of criticism about the girls and all that, and that's fine. I'm more than happy to explain that. But uh, you might be surprised, and you're probably not old enough to know it yet, but men and women are different. <laughs> and What gives you that idea? Well, with a woman, I will tell you right now, if her child has a sniffle, that's the most important thing in her life. She's not going to work. She's not that, yeah. that, that, that a man. It's going to work. You're right. <laughs> you know, it's we just we think differently. Our priorities are different, and you just have to accommodate because. Without the motorsport girls, I don't have a show, and I know it. Now, you produced a new show for 14 years straight without a rerun. Without a rerun. How <laughs> stressful is that to, to do? Uh, it really is. I, the one that I probably remember the best is because I was married to a Russian girl at the time, and she said it with that strong Russian ac accent. We're supposed to do a snowmobile show. And unfortunately, we had like four days of... 60 degree weather there wasn't any snow left we had six inches of water it was raining like mm. crazy and we still had to shoot the program anyway now, how do you shoot it? she called it a rainmobile program okay <laughs> it was but those are the kind of things you go through that regardless of the weather conditions whether we have blizzards or heat or whatever we shoot right and the audience understood it right? yeah they do understand it at least i've never had any people complain about it. i know those weren't the greatest shows in the world that we shot but one way or the other we We've got to shoot. Now, what's the secret to your success for 30 years of Motorsports Unlimited? Well, I'm not sure how you measure success. You're able to put it together. You were yeah, able but, to but, air it for 30 yeah, years. Yeah, it's been on the air for 30 years, and yet I haven't achieved anything near what I wanted to accomplish. And I would suggest to you, since I started, we've lost Santa Fe Speedway. We lost Raceway Park. We lost O'Hare Stadium. We lost uh, US 30 Drag Strip. Uh, we've just lost um, um, uh, Ileana. Uh, these are all those are all fights that I had hoped Motorsports Unlimited would save these places and we'd be able to continue with motorsports and yet in the time that I've been on here we've lost these things so I don't consider that very successful so I'm not sure how you measure success you'd have to define that a little bit for me now before we leave you, you brought a video clip from your archives yeah. you know you you've been producing all these shows over 1400 of them mm -hmm. and you're 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 bringing flashbacks back into the shows as, as the, your recent shows you're just mm -hmm. and it's amazing how good and crisp and clear and everything looks and it, it looks like it was shot on film, you know, even though it was videotape. I, I you, was, you preserved it really well. Well, I'm very lucky. I had a man named Chuck Itzenthaler that uh, worked with us for 18 years as my cameraman. Okay. And he was excellent. Chuck is a very bright guy. He had no knowledge. He didn't know anything about photography when he started, but he had the one advantage that you really need for television. He's smart. Yeah. And he picked things up. The technology was not a, a, a... In fact, I started using him with the program because we were starting to shoot some bands and I wanted him to do the audio on it. And I quickly became aware of how sharp this guy was. And he was a real asset to the show for 18 years. Let's take a quick look at this video clip you brought from okay. uh, Channel 2 News. Okay. There are a few limits to what TV producers will try these days to get people to watch. But in Schaefer's place, Mark reports on a show done right here in Chicago that uses an old-fashioned gimmick to draw a crowd of viewers. 
Yeah, can you bring it over? No. At a cable TV studio downtown Chicago, they're getting ready to shoot a segment of Motorsports Unlimited, arguably the most watched cable TV show in Chicago. Hi, I'm Subi Yitzin Thaler. Appearing on nine cable systems in the area. I'm Denise, and welcome to... On most systems, it's seen four times a week, no, with such blockbuster topics as new advances in fuel injection technology mm -hmm. and the advantages of a stroked crank 484 with steel lifters. Hi, I'm Chris Schutz. The reason this motorsport show is so popular is the star. I'm Bill Wilt, and we want to welcome you to Motorsports Unlimited. Pop this cable TV show features uh, muscle cars uh, and mannequins, like show, live uh, ones, uh, very, very and they cool. are what everyone's watching. Little, uh... You're the guy that has that show with those girls with the feathers. <laughs> they don't know his name or the name of the show, but they recognize the feathers. That's right. Instantly. So yeah. it's kind of like you are the stars, in a way. Sure. Listen, this is a great car, but I'm going to tell you something. We're going to have to move. We're going to have to walk around behind the uh, car, and I'll explain it as we go. Just go ahead and walk around there. See, I get... Uh, angry letters from viewers if we block the girls so <laughs> often interviews are done way in the back of the studio while the cameras get shots of the cars from you know interesting angles the and they sometimes stay on those shots for a long Lindsay. time certainly do it's campy it's dated it's unbelievable and it's absolutely mesmerizing the hour-long show is a low-budget cable access production everyone's a volunteer bill the star helps in all phases of production no detail escapes his attention or should that be no important detail escapes his attention? How can I get folks to watch our little public access show when they all have a remote control in their hand and they can go to channel two like that? Nothing attracts attention like a pretty girl. Motorsports Unlimited is a show that knows its audience. Is it rolling? Okay. Girls, arch your backs, puff up, big warm smiles. Everybody look at camera two, big smile. Mark Schaefer, Channel Two News. Just as long as it's not on at 10 o'clock at night. Hey, Larry, this is Matt Cassane, your old buddy, uh, fellow cable access producer, fellow uh, Chicago guy. And, um, yeah, I got to know uh, Bill Wilt, a host of Motorsports Unlimited, uh, mostly because we uh, use the same uh, studio at uh, Comcast Studios in Elmhurst, Illinois, over the years. And uh, he was always a super nice guy and easy to talk to and approachable and uh, just uh, just a friendly dude. And, um Love to show and uh, and uh, the girls, <laughs> the the costumes and uh, yeah you know you know you just be flipping around uh, looking for something to watch on I think it was Sunday nights he was on and um, and uh, yeah you would just stumble upon uh, Motorsports Unlimited and uh, always had that cool introduction by Jerry Bryant from JBTV I'll never forget that so yeah we will miss Bill what a great guy and also one one last memory. Uh, I was in a parade with Bill in Lyons, Illinois. This has got to be like 2008, 2009. Um, I was there with all my crazy characters. Bill was there with his uh, with his uh, friends from Motorsports Unlimited, and that was a great uh, a great memory too, man. So uh, thank you, Bill. Well, um, thank you for all the great memories and all the great television. Uh, you were one of a kind, man. So a big part of my upbringing, a big part of the reason why I'm into cars and why I have all this stuff was growing up watching Motorsports Unlimited with Bill Wilt. My dad would watch Norm Abrams. He'd watch, uh, you know, all the woodworking shows. He'd watch the Chicago Bears pregame, and then we'd watch Motorsports Unlimited. And that really expanded me into everything that was part of motorsports. Not just cars or car shows, but everything there is, and, and, and the education of the whole thing. And when we did our episode at the Claremont Collections, we needed a car guy, and... The first thought that came to my mind was Bill Wilt. He's the Chicago car guy. Like, how Chicago. amazing would that be if you could right. get him out here? How yeah. amazing would that be? Yeah. And, and Rich, I, I hadn't seen anything from, from, from him for a while, so I didn't know if he was still around, if he was still doing stuff. Reached out. He got right back to me. We had a three-hour phone conversation, and we became good friends after that. He came out and did the show. Yeah. I, w no questions asked. Like He was just complete professional about everything. We had a great time. And I, I just couldn't, I, we were very, very fortunate, very, very lucky to be able to have him out there. Yeah, a couple of things that are special to me was just that I uh, brought my grandfather out that had actually been interviewed by Bill years before. He'd been um, on his show, yeah. Yeah, so to get those two guys out there in the same kind of era of car guys from Chicagoland area was pretty cool. But then to also to have Bill go, uh, it was his first time at Claremont Collections. 
So before he yeah. passed, to uh, have him go to you know one of the best car collections in uh, the country, exposed him I mean, to something he didn't know about, yeah, which is cool. there's not much Bill didn't know about yeah. when it came to cars and 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 motorsports for sure. So uh, yeah, very very lucky to have him and yeah. very lucky to be his friend before he passed. Yeah, well, thank you to everyone that helped put that together and uh, cheers to Bill. Yeah. Rest in peace, yeah. brother. And the Chicago Times Herald, uh, the editor and publisher of the Chicago Times Herald, you better turn your phone off. <laughs> well, not the, I'll get it. Hello. Hey, he's going to do it. He's going to take the call. I can't hold believe on, it. Hold on a second. Yeah. It's, it's the next guest. Hold on a second. What the, is this? Hold on. Sorry about that. The door on the left side. Ring the doorbell. Okay, there is the doorbell? Yeah. And I'm like, there's a fence in front of me, so I did it the right way, right? Uh, yeah, there's a fence. There should be a fence in front of you, yeah. Small gray door. Doorbell's on the right. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's okay. I've been through it a million times. Okay, well, whatever. People have to know that. Public access television, we do it all ourselves. Yeah. You don't have a crew out there <laughs> letting in your next guest.